let's just get into it and let's start off with everyone's favorite team. Uh, two of us are wearing the jersey. Nelson's obviously not a real fan, but um, I'm wearing um, I'm wearing Waratahs undies. So. Yeah, all right. Well, don't show us those, mate. Um, but uh, <laughs> let's get into the Waratahs. Um, Harry, do you want to take us through some of the significant um, ins? Yeah, well, there's a lot, you know, when you've got a world-class team, you do need to add a little bit more <laughs> into it. Uh, sorry, enough of that, enough of that. Significant ends, Kurtley Beal is huge. Obviously, he came back through the back end of last year trying to push for another Olympic, uh, sorry, Olympic, World Rugby World Cup. We expect him to play some big minutes, probably all at fullback for the side, where I think he'll be trying to compete for the international side. Uh, so it's going to be good to see him fit and healthy. And I know he's had a big preseason, and it's not often that a player with that experience experience does get a full preseason in so excited to see him we also have Tolu Latu coming back from Steve Francais obviously he had a pretty uh a, a pretty shocking way to leave that sorry T- tumultuous uh, tumultuous that's good, yeah. Great way to describe it, time over there. Uh, I think he was banned more than he was actually playing. But obviously, a very talented player will be good to add to the depth that hook, hooker that the uh, the Tars have. The man that is pictured to my right or left, I don't know which way this will flip it, uh, Namani Nandolo, who I've already raved about on this pod, so it won't take me long to go again. Just an absolute wrecking ball. I hope he plays 80 minutes every single week and they just shift him from... 14 to 11 to 13 to 12 to 15 to 9 and then restart the cycle again. The three? Let's Number go. eight even. Wherever, you know, mate. whatever. Yeah, uh, wherever. Yeah. And uh, I guess the the last name from the experienced side of players that we're bringing through is going to be Teleni Siu, who, uh, if nothing else, has an incredibly fun name to say. Obviously, you probably heard us talking about him a lot when he was playing for the Chiefs. A few mm. years ago, he has been playing for the Toyota side over in the Japanese rugby uh, competition over there. And uh, Nelson, why don't you just quickly touch on the quick other players, quickly on the other players that we've got coming through. Look, I'm a big fan of Harrison Goddard coming across, uh, fighting out for that sort of bench, probably going to be the bench halfback. Tom Lambert coming across from the Glasgow Warriors. He, he, I was just going to say, Goddard that was one of the players of the competition over in the Major League Rugby, absolutely lighting it up for the Giltinis. Um, look, it's not hard. I think if you're an Aussie, you're, you're lighting it up over there. But look, <laughs> well, I, I, in I, one I, sentence, <laughs> absolutely dismiss a whole competition. Boom. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, rightly so, especially as they're destroying any Aussie link there. But look, yeah. I, I think the big thing about Goddard is before he left, he was playing very, very well in Troot Shield. He's gone on to perform well there in a professional setup. He has some experience in Super Rugby. I, I think he's quite a good player and he's, he's you know, developed his experience in the last few years. So I think he'll be a good backup for us. Um, Tom Lambert, the the uh, Waratahs hooker, is an exciting player that I'm looking yeah. out for. And Max Jorgensen, most of you probably haven't heard of him. He might get a crack back into the year. 18-year-old. It'll be exciting to see him get a run if he does. Be cool. Man, I don't awesome. just want to clarify, Tommy Lambert's a loose head prop. He's a Sydney Sorry, loose head. over to Glasgow for a couple of years, played for the Scottish Yeah, New South, South Welshman. Side. And well, uh, Jack Bowen as well. I want to highlight him, young 10 coming through that played for the Aussie under 20s, who's an absolute weapon to just add to the ridiculous playmate <laughs> socks at the Tars. We just uh, we're getting we're getting some of the rust off uh, second pod for the year, you know, just getting back into it. But look, let's go. So, how about some of the outs? Um, one of the biggest outs, uh, Alex Newsom. Um, <laughs> I mean, look, over over the over the years of the pod, we've we've all felt a certain way about Alex Newsom. Let's just say, happy happy that he's gone. Um, but <laughs> oh, rough affair. Rough... No, um, rough affair. True. I mean, he was captain of the team for a bit, but uh, what, James we... Lamb also. Yep. We... We like the guy, but we just didn't understand how he was getting start like so many starts. It's true. Um, look, there's there's loads of players that are gone. Um, just really quickly, shout out to all James Ram. I think was a big one. Um, another big prospect on the wing there. But um, what Jeremy Williams gone to the force? Jamie Roberts, the Welsh stalwart, retired. Henry Robertson to the force. Ryan Smith to the line. I mean, I don't know if we should name every other player, but um, say Arthur. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Look, there's, there's Carlo Tizano, another big one. Uh, he's gone yeah. to Japan, I think, but uh, and Jack Rand, but uh, he hasn't. He's gone to Italy, but yep, close. That's all right. It was you know the wrong hemisphere, but that's all right. Let's yeah. let's take us on then to what we think the, the best fifteen will be, and this includes players that um, are a little bit injured. You know, might not be starting the season or whatever. But we've just said throughout the year. Based on the squad, this is the be- what we think the best Waratahs starting 15. 
15 is. Um, I'll, I'll kick us off with the, the the forward pack. Obviously, we've got our main man, Angus Bell, number one fantasy pick, uh, and rightly so. Dave Parecki and HJH. Um, very, very strong front row there. And uh, in the locks, we've got Jed Holloway, um, even though he's been playing a lot of six for the Wallabies, but we'll talk about that. And uh, Ned Hannigan um, in the locking stocks. Nels, do you want to take us through your beloved back row? I do, mate. I do. You've already named a few of them in the locks, but I think we'll get Will Harrison shifting to that number six role. Will Harris. If that's our lock. I Will Harris, sorry. We will. Yeah. I don't reckon we will. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I, I think you, oh, we might have to pull you up on that one, mate. I'm sorry. But uh, yes, yeah. he's, he's definitely not Will Harris. I know you're keen to make everyone a back rower, mate, but look, that's a, that's a bridge too far, okay? <laughs> Look, if he's on the field, I'll be happy. But look, Will Harris filling that sixth role. Uh, who else but Michael Hooper filling that role in number seven? He has some competition. There might be some uh, rotation this year. And Lange Gleeson at number eight after his Wallabies debut. Jakey Gordon, obviously our nine. And Ben Dono is who we've got locked in. Ben Donaldson at number 10. Geez, a bit of debate. About that number 10 jersey, isn't there? Uh, there is, look, we'll get to that in the key questions. Do you, do you want to bring us through in the back line? Oh, yeah, sorry, I can do that, man. Uh, Lalakai <laughs> Fichetti and Isaiah Parisi in the centres. Mark Nwanganitawasi, Dylan Peach and Kirtley Beal to round out the back three. And then mm. off the bench, Craigie? Yep, the bench, uh, Tolu Latu. Um, in there, which, you know, rough for my, my Vailano, who's been very good. But, um, Who we like. For- yeah, who we like as well. It's Tara Faulkner and Archer Holtz, uh, the reserve props. Nels? Uh, Lockie Swinton, we think, is going to come back into the fold here at, and, and cover lock slash back row. And Charlie Gamble, I think, he's going to get a lot of game time and slot in, um, you know, across the back row. Harry, do you want to take the, the back reserves? Yeah, Harry Goddard, we've already talked about. Tane Edmed and Namani Nandolo. Obviously, a lot of competition for those bench spots. Um, but look, we'll, we'll get into that in a moment. Excellent. Well, that takes us to the key questions, um, which we've kind of touched on a little bit of them. Um, look, I mean, the first and most important key question we've already touched on many times, but it's just how much game time can we get in the money that dollar like, really? Um, Harry's already alluded to every position possible is fine. Just get the big man on the field. I want to see as much of him as possible. Um, but no, we, in a serious, more serious note, I think we think we'll see him coming on for probably the last 30 of quite a few games. But, you know, certainly he'll, we'll get a start or two. But um, just that impact I, player. I um, think he'll get starts as well. I think he'll get starts and, and he'll sort of rotate around the the wings. Um, I think he'll get a, a few cracks. And Harry, look, Harry's really upset that I cut him off earlier about uh, this number 10 Twice. question. So, look, no, the, one of the bigger questions is the number 10. All, like the chat, all the chat is around who's the number 10. We've got Ben Donaldson, Tay and Edmed. Will Harrison coming back into the into the fray. Um, Harry, what are you what what are your thoughts around the Waratahs number ten? Look, I uh, I don't agree with the uh, the masses. That that's my thoughts. We had 131 votes in Nelson's poll about who Darren Coleman should pick as the fly half. First choice was the man we've named at ten, Ben Dono Donaldson. Not a very creative nickname from Nelson there. It's his actual. Uh, second place was Champagne Tain Edmund, which he's very proud of. Nelson, he workshop that for at least two weeks, I think. No, I just looked up rhyming stuff for the Tain. <laughs> and uh, this is quality content. And. Uh, <laughs> And I just want to say, uh, my pick, Will Harrow Harrison, again, fantastic nickname. Uh, only had 9% of the votes, which I thought was surprising after such a good 2021 when the Waratahs was such a rubbish side. I think he was really, really good. So, obviously, he is probably uh, less likely to start at any point, given they did try and shift him to 15 and build his skill and time set there. But um, I, I still think he's probably the guy with the highest ceiling. And then, of course... <laughs> <laughs> Curly, Curly Bill Beal. Nelson, what have you done? Only That's his actual stuff. nickname, mate. Just do some research. Look, Harry, we can take solace in the fact that he this is on his own personal Twitter account, not on the draft rap. So it's embarrassing himself and not us, which is great. Curly's um, actual Bill. nickname. <laughs> but, Curly uh, Bill poor... has only 4% of the vote. So the fans want to see him at four back, not 10. Yeah. Excellent. Um, all right. Some other key questions. Look, Parecki, we think is is the starting Wallabies hooker come World Cup 23. Um, 
a lot a, a theme throughout this year will be managing players uh, to get them to that 23 World Cup. So they've got to get enough game time in there to be playing well and in form. But also, if they are a lock, then you don't want to play them too much. So with such quality bench in Tolu Latu and Mahe Valanu, will we see a bit of rotation? Or are we just going to see Pareki starting every game and the other two will kind of swap around the bench a bit? What, what do we? How do we think that will unfold? I, I think you're right. They'll, they'll manage his minutes. Um, I, I, I don't know, Harry, we, we haven't heard any resting protocols. And even if there is one, it's probably going to change um, with um, Eddie at the moment coming in and, and how he wants to sort of manage those things moving forward. But what, what, was, what have we heard so far with that, Harry? Yeah, there's definitely been talk about the resting protocol. Um, I thought that was it was th- two or three games or something like that. Wallabies to rest for three super games. Um, under Dave Rennie's, I was going to say that was pre Eddie. Yeah. Eddie might just go, no, nah, stuff that. They're all playing every every minute. I don't care. Right, about he's it. Eddie, Eddie is a big fan of managing workload, so I, I don't think that's going to be it. Yeah, that's I true. think uh, I think it's probably going to be something similar. So the original rule was three games through the season, the Wallabies had to be rested, and then for them not to play more than five weeks in a row as well. So obviously wanted to spread it out a little bit. Um, so basically copying New Zealand for a few years back. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. But let's, yeah. I, I wasn't going to give him that. <laughs> how, how dare you, Nels? Um, Nels, do you want to take us through? So another another key question. Uh, locks, we have this plethora of lo- like lock back rowers, essentially, that are playing lock. So we have Jed Holloway, Teddy Flanagan, and Teleni Siu, um, who are all really back rowers, but, you know, will be playing lock in the Waratahs, I suppose. Like we touched on Jed Holloway, absolutely amazing. It's six for the Wallabies. Um, but what about the other guys, Nelson? How do you see that playing out? Look, it's a tough one. Talani Siu is a 29-year-old, 202-centimetre ex-back rower that's transitioned back into a lock. But he's been spending some time over at Toyota, hasn't really played much and seemed to sort of fade away after, you know, four or so good years at the Chiefs. So, look, I think there's potential. We see him come in. We see him get some good minutes there. But I don't see why... Um, DC is going to stray from what he's got at the moment, which is a Holloway as a mobile but the more physical lock and then probably, you know, a, a, a um, Hannigan as the other lock there. We play very mobile, the Waratahs, and I think that suits us very, very well. And then who fills that bench spot? Do we use someone like a Swinton or do we decide we want that bigger body in CU on the bench? That's That's something we'll have to wait and see. Because even even our the other locks in our squad, like Hugh Sinclair, is also a number eight, like a back rower. Like he's the smallest of the lot. I, I don't, we just don't. <laughs> I don't know. Like so, we have who, who are the other guys in the squad? We've got Zane Morold Von Appen from Easties and from Uni Von Appen. Who? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, we'll have to see. But we basically only have back rowers playing lock, which you know I don't mind to be honest, particularly in Super Rugby Pacific. But um, just interesting. Yeah. Zane Zane Marolt, uh, he's supposed to be quite a big body, isn't he? Coming in from uh, Queen Bean Whites, but I just don't see him making his way in this year. I think, you know, there's there's too many big names ahead of them, and and we play quite a mobile style. So I think we're just going to go for the mobile locks and, and use it as a strength. And I think I think all these back rowers need to get game time to try and make the Wallabies, and and they're going to have to fit them in there in in, in locks. So I that's think- true. I think the reality is we're trying to win a title this year. This is the year that the Waratahs are throwing everything at it. I'm not saying we should, but I'm saying we will. Um, (laughs) I I don't think it's the year that a young lock comes through. As you said, Sam Marold is 202 centimetres tall, so at least he's a big body. So he's The same as Sioux, isn't he? Sorry? Same Same as Sioux. Yeah, Yeah, so he's he's a big, big unit. So I think Mm. if that's what they're looking for, then... There's a reason to pick those kind of guys, but I just don't think it's their year. I think Sue is probably the uh, the yeah. only man that might come through it. All right, yep. and last last one of the key questions. It's we it's what we've been talking about, but game management. Michael Hooper, Waratahs captain, um, obviously Wallabies starter for 2023. Charlie Gamble just sitting waiting in the wings, who's been absolutely awesome. Do we do we just say straight out of the the gate that? they should probably share time like we're talking 50 50 or something you know what i mean is that is that is that a realistic expectation i think i think the really interesting thing is going to be to see if they can afford to play both hooper and gamble at six and seven considering that they have a pretty light on second row i think Mm. it's going to be very challenging and it means the eight probably will harris might sit above gleason in terms of a player that can excel in the set piece and maybe add a little bit more height and uh and versatility there 
but it, it's um that you know they're both on the Wallaby squad now with um Charlie Gamble being rushed straight in. He's, he's an exceptional player, had a fantastic 2022. I, I think you're right. I think Hooper's just probably going to get four rests through the season, maybe three rests through the season, and a couple of bench games, and they make him start ten games plus all the finals. Um and uh, and that might be it. Look, I, I, I think we see him fill a similar role to Pete Samu for the Wallabies. He's the same height, same build, same size, can cover six, seven, eight. So I think we see him get a couple starts there at, at seven when Hooper's not there. We see him fill six occasionally. We see him eight, fill eight occasionally, potentially. And, and we see him on the bench covering a lot of those roles. He, he will become the Pete Samu of the Waratahs. And that's not a bad thing because Pete Samu's had a lot of time for the Wallabies. <laughs> and it's just that version versatility and, and the ability to sort of break open a game. True. Nels, you have to work on a nickname. We had Pooper for po- uh, Pocock and Hooper. It can't be Gooper. It's going to have to be something more creative. But um, no, look, I agree. Let's let's push into stocks are rising and stocks are falling. Um, Harry, stocks are rising for the Waratahs in 2023. I mean, they're, they're probably the ones that everyone would think. Mark Nwangani has, uh has come out of nowhere last year when he'd fallen so far down the rank and then ranks. And then Lange Gleeson, obviously exceptional, exceptional 2022. So I expect both of those guys to really push for big minutes. And the loss of Raboni Warren Vasayatho, he's been dropped out of the side as well, just shows that Raboni's really, sorry, Lange Gleeson's really set for some big minutes. Yep. Nice one. Nels, what about stocks of falling? Uh, look, Will Harris, we're, we're not too sure on him. He could cover that six role, but if he's not starting six and he's only really considered an eight for them, not as much of a line out jumping option and he's behind Gleason, there's going to be some real competition there for him. And it, and it might be, you know, him who's going to be someone that's, that's falling off the radar a little bit, but look, we all hope that he is starting six and, and getting good game time for them. Uh, another name is very similar, Will Harrison. Um, we all know Harry would love him to be the starting 10. I think Will Harrison potentially has the best ceiling. I, I agree of the lot. And we haven't seen him behind such a successful, you know, dominant back line that hopefully we'll see in, in 2023. And we saw a fair bit of in 2022. So I really hope we get to see him get some some chances. But with Kurtley Beal back, it's it's going to be tough on him and, and Dylan and, Peach. And, and he'll, he'll only be back um, a couple of rounds in, at least three or four rounds in, I think. But, um, yeah, I mean, still, still relatively early. Um, but yeah, he's got time to work his way back in. But it, it's an uphill battle for him with Edmund there as well. And and Dylan Peach, very physical player, breakout player uh, on the wing for the the Wallabies and the Waratahs. And Kagi's never really given him any credit. But with Namani Nandolo coming in, it makes it a very tough ask for him. And and Nwanga Nidawasi, you know, inserting himself as a, a real likely starter for the Wallabies in the World Cup. You know, he's, he's got a tougher year this year and, and he's going to have to work really, really hard. He'll get his chances and I think he'll he'll get a lot of starts and he might get a few bench opportunities. But he is a very, very good player. But he had everything his way in 2022 and it won't be the same in 2023. Agreed. I like him. He's, I like Peach. He's not a nuisance. But uh, look, around us out, Smokies for the Waratahs. Uh, Talani Siu, um, you know, he could, uh, if he's starting at lock, uh, be an absolute kind of value fantasy player, but also just like, great for for the Waratahs team. It could really excel getting big game time um, and playing that type of role. Uh, and otherwise, we've touched on a bit Nemanja Nadolo. Nadolo. Just, um, you know, he's 34, which is not, you know, I guess he's old for outside backs, but um, it's Nadolo. So he, he could be the heaviest guy on the team as well. So I've got, I've got one other one. I've got one oh, yep. other one. I'm going to yep. throw uh, Archer Holtz out there. I oh, think yeah. HJH is obviously coming back from his Achilles rupture. I like it. So he's going to be a little bit slow to start the year. I was really impressed with Archer Holtz's first year uh, in Super Rugby last year. He's, what is he, Nelson? You, you know, this is right up your alley. Two centimetres shorter and a similar weight as Angus Bell or something like that. He's a big uh, boy. And he's got a he, he's, well. he's a very big boy. I think he was either, he was, he's 190. Yeah, he's a, I think he's one centimetre or one kilo sort of lighter. He's very, very similar build and he's a similar age as well. And he Mate, was just this- exceptional for a young prop. I thought the scrum actually lifted every time he came onto the field last year. So I think he's got a real opportunity to make a name for himself. 
I've got one other name and we've thrown him up in, in previous years and it's Joey Walton. Joey Walton, you know, he, he's been held back through injury in recent years. Uh, we have seen Fichetti injuries, Parisier injuries in the last couple of years. And, you know, barring throwing Beal across or throwing one of the 10s to 12, that could thrust Joey Walton into to getting an opportunity. And, you know, those players probably are both going to get some rests um throughout the the year as well and and joey walton despite limited opportunities has big potential and, and this is going to be a chance for him to at least put his name you know down as as a future player for the task i want to move on to the next game but just on joey walton i feel like i've i don't love just shutting players down but i feel like every time i watched highlights in uh of the npc joey was playing right. for the bay of plenty um, whenever the other team scored a try, it was they always ran straight through Joey Walton again and again and again. So Jeez, he, he, like had, but, he uh, had so many tackle busts and line breaks every game. He was a breakout star in the NBA. Right, the highlights I watched, unfortunately, he was always on the wrong side of them. That's all I'm saying. But, um, but I think he's going to get to start the year with Parisi coming back from injury. So well, I guess he'll get his opportunity, but it's going to be hard to unrest, uh, to wrestle a spot off Paquetti and Parisi, isn't it? For sure. Absolutely. Definitely. All right, and look, that wraps up the uh, preview of the task.